All right, guys, so I kind of wanted to show you some of the results of my little um, wood and concrete experiment. And remember, these all had the borax and the boric acid in the water. And I had two on the shelf over here that were still curing. This was one of them. Yeah. I should be wearing a mask. So, as you can see that uh, none of these, I bet this one will break apart too. Yeah, this one was a, well, I'm not even going to say it was better than the other ones. Um, all of these failed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and this is all going to go out. <clears throat> Probably in my driveway. <coughs> so, it doesn't look like the concrete in any of these cured at all. It looks like it, it looks like the, uh, the borax and the uh, boric acid literally just stopped the curing process. So, I do have my one other one that I did. Wow, this is messy. Anyway, I do have my one other one that I did. This one had the wood treated before it went in the mix. So, this one here. The wood was treated before it went into the mix rather than the water being treated with the mix. Um, and that the mix being the, the boric, the, uh, the borax and the boric acid. Okay. And... I can tell you right now, this one feels, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel squishy like, um, like these did. These felt very squishy. So I am going to see if I can flex this and get it to break. That would be a no. So, this one seems to be fairly successful. Um, it did take a lot longer to cure. And I'm sure that was because of the, the wood chips being in there. But it really seems pretty strong. Um... So, I would say that one was actually successful. And now you're probably wondering why, why I was doing this. For one, it's very, it's light. This is not, this is not heavy at all. Um, and this is about at least a good inch and a half, inch and a half thick. Um, this should weigh... maybe around three pounds. So let's see, can the camera see that? I don't know if it can. Well, hopefully it can. So it actually weighs 2.4 pounds. That is not bad at all. Okay, so this block weighs about 2.4 pounds. And it's about an inch and a half thick, roughly. I don't know if I, I don't know where my measuring tape is. So there was one other thing that I wanted to try to do um, with this. But I have to go get some other tools real quick. And we're back. Okay, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to take a decking screw and I want to see if I can drill through this into this sheet of plywood and have it uh, basically have it actually uh, grip inside the concrete. Let's find out. I'm going to put a hole in my board, but that's okay. That's not a very good spot, actually. Well, 
We'll try it anyways. That may have actually worked out pretty well. Let's try to back it out. So I did get a, a couple of little chips off the bottom here. You can see that. There was a little bit of chipping up here. I don't know. What I'm trying to figure out is if, because this is insulated. Um, let me get back over here where you guys can actually see me. This has a bunch of styrofoam in it too. It's part of the reason why it's so lightweight. And what I'm wondering here is, if I sealed this, stuck it to the outside of a building, would I have an insulated building? And the reason I put the wood in there is because I'm lazy, I really don't want to use mortar any more than I have to. And I want to put these up really fast and then I, I, I either want to put up blocks like similar to this or similar to our colored stones. But I want it to have an insulating property. I don't want it to just have the solid cement uh, or concrete mix, which um, has horrible thermal properties as far as... Uh, retaining heat and keeping heat out and all this other stuff. So that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out a way that I can use relatively cheap materials and come up with a basically an insulated cement. I really don't want to have to pay for blocks like this to be made because they are very expensive. So if I can make them myself, then I might have a good solid I might have a good solid building and I'm planning what I'd like to do in the long run is I want to make actually larger sheets of this much like um, either a, a 4 by 8 sheet or in my case I'll probably make it a 2 by 8 sheet that I can literally just screw to the wall and I've basically got my basically got my exterior sheeting well, not really exterior sheeting. I've, I've got my insulated concrete kind of all, all in one. And you know, as you know, everybody knows with concrete, it doesn't have much flex to it. So I want to make sure that this has some ability um, to not just crack in half and I know that I can put all sorts of different stuff in here. I, can, I know I can put metal. I can put uh, fiberglass. There are all sorts of reinforcements that I can do. I guess I was just curious as to if the wood chips could be used because they, they're cheap, for one. And they have a little bit of insulation value themselves, although it's not great. And they have some flexibility. So I am going to do some more tests with this. I, I've got, um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a map torch to it and stuff. I'm going to uh, 
heat test this and see if I can get it to burn. And if it does, what does it do when it's burning? Does it, you know, give off terrible gases or what does it do? Obviously, this is not something that I could sell unless I actually went and had it formally tested and certified and all this other stuff. But I want to use it myself. I can use it myself. So, anyway, that was... Um, I'm a little bit surprised. I, I was afraid that this one was going to be as brittle as these, but it, it's it's really not. So, one success out of many failures. That's kind of how you just experiment and do things. All right, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I will be back later on with how this did with fire. And I'm also probably going to soak it in water too. See what happens there. All right, guys, have a good day.